In this part, we are going to move the text from your manuscript into Affinity and discuss the fonts, leading, indentations and the baseline grid. And before formatting, we need to carefully check our manuscript. We need to check how many headings are there, how many levels of headings, what kind of headings, uh, are there any quotes, uh, notes, side notes or end notes, or anything else. So here we have the book title, the author's name, and then we have a contents, the table of contents. And we also have a letter from the publisher. Then we have another letter from Captain Gulliver to his cousin Simpson. Some kind of a subheading. And now the book starts. We have our the highest level heading, heading 1. Uh, it's a part 1, a voyage to Lollipop. And then the heading level 2 are allocated for the chapters. Chapter 1. And we have this short paragraph here. It's kind of a introductory part of this chapter describing uh, the main things and the main characters of the chapter. And on the left side you see the outline of the book. Every heading 1, heading 2. If we had another headings, heading 3, 4, we could also see them here. I have another video describing how to create such an outline. It's super helpful for book formatting and for ebook formatting as well. Okay, let's go further. We have chapter 2 and also some introductory paragraph here. And we see we have a footnote here. It's a great example. We will discuss how footnotes work in Affinity, how to create them, how to design them, how to manage footnotes, end notes and side notes. Here is the body note, you see, number one. And here is the footnote. We also have such small headings. Those could be heading three, yes, article one, describing this thing, article 2, description, article 3, description and so on. Although they are not uh, real headings that will appear in the table of contents, later we can uh, assign them heading 3 style so that it's easy to work with them. And again we have part 2, again chapter 1 of the part 2 and an introductory paragraph here. And here we have an image. Let's keep that in mind. We will place this image separately while formatting. Okay, great. We have just carefully scanned our manuscript and checked the headings, the number of levels of headings, the images. We saw that there, are, there is one image. When we check the tables, there is no table. We saw that there are footnotes and uh, two levels of headings and one like semi-heading that we will need to design later in formatting stage. Great. Now what we need to do is to copy everything. Control A. And now we need to copy this. You can copy with your mouse like this or use a shortcut Command C or Control C and move to the Affinity. This is our document that we created in part 2. We need to insert the text frames here in the master page as we discussed. Here and here. Great. Now go to regular pages and click on the page number one and paste the content. Control V, Command V or with this command window. So everything was placed, but you see it doesn't flow here. It's because our text content were placed only inside this text frame. And you see this indication uh, this tells us that the content 
inside this text frame is not completely visible so something is hidden here or just the content doesn't fit the text frame that's why we need to flow we need to connect this text frame with the text frame on the second page click on this rectangle here and click on the text frame that you want to connect here okay you see this uh, line it means that the content from this text frame flows to this text frame but it still doesn't fit completely so we click here and connect this one how many pages we can possibly have here 300 or 400 we are not going to do this manually adding pages one by one and connecting all frames instead we need to connect the text frames in a master page and automatically flow all the content okay let's go back to the place where we needed to paste our text here and you see that uh, text frames here are not connected we need to connect them in the master page you see here they are connected now and we again pass the text here and hold shift and click on this rectangle okay it takes a little bit time depending on how long your book is great uh, you see that now all the textual content were placed and automatically all the pages were created and reflown for us great mm, now we need to set the main font the body font for that again select everything control a you should also select the titles the headings just everything because this is our main font then go to character panel choose a font i have another video explaining the best free fonts for your book uh, for this example we are going to use crimson pro and we need to set the font size uh, for uh, like adult books or regular trade books i recommend using something between 10 and 12 points it's good for general reader it's good for non-fiction and also fictions for romans uh, for children's books choose something higher like 14 16 or maybe even 18 here we set 11 points so make sure that we have points here and now the next thing that we want to do is define the language so spelling this is uh, english yes you can just uh, click on general english or if you know that it's uh, united kingdom then choose united kingdom or any other country for now let's just choose general english and hyphenation it's also very important to set the language here hyphenation also english united states or united kingdom let's go with united kingdom and we don't want to change anything here let's move to paragraph panel and we need to define the leading leading uh, is the distance between two lines of the text okay so for example here uh, let's activate the ruler okay rulers and for example this line here and another line below this so the distance between this line and the line above it is the leading okay it's not leading when you lead a dog or something it's leading because of the material lead the metal let's choose everything and when you set the font for example 11 point you always want to set the leading higher 
than the font size. So when I choose the font 11, I always put the leading as 15 points. Okay. You see that it doesn't work here. It's because we need to check this exactly. You can also set the multiples like uh, 1 to 1 means uh, if it's uh, 11 point font, the leading will also be 11. If 1.5, then the leading is 1.5 times bigger than the font size. I say it exactly and exactly 15 points. Okay, great. And now we need to remove all these uh, indentations. First line indentation as well as just left and right side indentations, it's here. We set zero, left indent, right indent, we set zero. Uh, space before the paragraph, we set zero. So we just, right now, we are unifying the text. Seems like we are making the text by default. Everything is the same. And after that, we are going to design the headings, the quotes, and so on. First line indent should always be equal to the leading. So for example, here we have leading 15 points and the first line indent should also be 15 points, which is automatically converted as 5.3 millimeters. Great. Uh, we don't have this last line indent and the space after paragraph should also be zero. Super, mm, let's go further and yes check prevent orphan first line uh, so that we don't have the first the single first line hanging here so for example you see here yes the first line is left alone on the previous page while the the paragraph itself on is on the next page to prevent this we click on prevent orphan first lines Great, and it's the last lines automatically moved together with the whole paragraph onto the next page on the whole book. The same works for the prevent without last line so that we don't have hanging lines on the next page. Okay, let's go and uh, use auto hyphenation. Yes, we always want to use hyphenations because you see here we said the Justification as justified left. Formatting software or text editor stretches the words in, to the whole uh, width of the text frame. And the software tries to put as much words as possible into uh, the single line. And that's why we have empty spots between the words. Okay, we call them lakes when we have empty space between words. We call them lakes because they look like a lake. And we also have rivers. You see here, it seems like the text is just broken. It's like tear, uh, which goes along several lines. To prevent this, we need to use auto hyphenation. And minimum word lengths we set to uh, three, so that the word should contain minimum three characters to be hyphenated. Minimum prefix is three, minimum suffix is three, and maximum consecutive hyphens is also three. It means that we have only three hyphenated words, one uh, below the other, so that we don't have too much hyphenated words on the right side of the page. Okay, great. We have just copied the text from the word and pasted it into Affinity and make the main text style. Now what we need to do is to set a baseline you see that the lines on the right side, on the left side and on the right side must match each other. So like this line should be in line with the line on the right side. 
S like this. Here, okay, it's great. They are, they are aligned. But for example, on the next page, they might not be aligned. So for example, if this paragraph would have a 14 point with a leading of 20, you see, these lines do not align anymore. To fix this, we use baseline. Click on view and baseline grid. Use baseline grid. Start position is zero and set to top of top margin. Grid spacing should be equal to the leading. So and let's activate the baseline. The baseline serve as a guide, like in the notebooks where each line is placed accurately on that uh, grid, on that baseline. If we would have the baseline, for example, of certain point, you see now our baseline is larger, the double of the leading and uh, yeah, we have every line placed on the baseline. We can go even like this but we need to set it as discussed to 15 point as the leading and the display threshold setting controls the visibility of the baseline actually it says don't show me the baseline if i zoomed out above this percentage okay here it's 100 yes we can zoom in to 100 percent and only then we start seeing the baseline. So for example, zoom 100, here we see it. And if we zoom out a little bit, we don't see it. Okay, we can set it to 50% and start seeing it even when we are at a 50% here. If we set it 200, we only start seeing it when we are uh, moved in to 200%. It's super handy. Let's to set it to 100. It's great that when you, for example, want to just zoom in, fix something, and then zoom out, and you don't see this baseline, it does not disturb your view. Okay, great. We have successfully completed this part. In the next part, we are going to discuss the headings, the paragraph styles, and we will stylize these headings, parts and chapters and make it look like a book. Stay tuned.